Hello and welcome back. Today I wanted to give some channel updates, talk about how my March TBR went, and then just talk about some miscellaneous things and give you guys an update. My life has been complete chaos for the last month, so my output is not what I wanted it to be. And now that I am starting to settle into a new location, I'm hoping that with this video I can give you guys some updates and actually plan out what this next month is gonna be like. But if you guys haven't noticed, I'm in a new spot. I have moved across the country, so that was a very long drive with the cat and all my stuff packed in the car, but we made it. And while right now I have a lot more space, I need to fill that space, so I am planning on getting a couple more bookshelves and start doing some book haul type content. Anyway, aside from that, I wanted to thank you guys because we hit 800 subs this month. This was a pretty big growth for me. I was looking at my statistics and realized that over the last two months, my channel really has started taking off. But if you look at this graph right here, you can see that for a long periods of time, I would get used to like, I'd get one or two subscribers like a month and I'd be super excited about it. So now that we're getting into where I'm seeing new people come in every day and a lot more engagement, it really does mean a lot. And I have a lot of fun making these videos and even more when you guys interact with them and we have some discussions about the books or ideas and stuff. It's one of the reasons why I made this channel was that I want to talk to people about books because I'm sure a lot of you guys have noticed that not everyone is a giant book nerd in your social life. So having that outlet to really just dive into these things has been a lot of fun and one of the reasons why I'm continuing to make these videos. The other random thing I wanted to talk about was I've started to play a little around with a community post. I enjoy shit posting memes and that seems to be a good outlet for it so I think I'm going to continue doing those and continue to play with them. Maybe figure out some polls just so we can continue that engagement. Who knows maybe that'll turn into a video idea in itself. But along with that I wanted to mention that I've started to create a couple Google Sheets to track the books that I'm reading, my TBR, what I've actually read and reviewed and sort of compile like some organization so you guys can know what I'm planning to read and eventually I'll figure out some format where I can take requests and then have you guys actually recommend stuff to me and I can check it out and then you can reference it to see if I've actually read it or not. But it's not done yet. I am hoping in the next couple weeks to have that semi-completed or at least to a point where I can share it and just show it off and then you guys can kind of see what's kind of planned, what's coming up. And same thing with videos. I'd like to get like a list of videos, one, because that organizes me and forces me to have a more steady output, and two, I feel like it builds a little bit of anticipation. But expect that in the near future and expect more terrible quality memes to fill your days in the in-between. Getting into the books that I read in March. So I had originally planned to do nine books. I knew that was going to be a bit ambitious. I knew there was going to be a lot of chaos because I was packing up, moving, trying to drive across country. So there was a lot of places for this plan to go completely awry. But I got through six of the nine books that I had originally planned to get through, so I'm not too mad about it. Now, the books that I did not get to that you can expect to see this month and I'll do a April TBR sometime in the next couple of days. We'll start out with was the beginning after the end book nine. I really want to finish it and have the series finish strong and then once I finish that I am planning on reading some of the graphic novel and sort of doing a comparison side by side. But with uh, book 10 coming out I am definitely going to read it this month and I'm very excited to get into it. Book 8.5 which I did read was very enjoyable and I think set my expectations pretty high for this upcoming book. The second book I did not get to was Magician Master. So that is, Magician's kind of weird. It's a Raymond D. Feist book, but it's split up into two. I got through the first one. I was hoping to circle back to it, but didn't get to it. And I had such a great time with the first book. And Rift War in general is a series that I'm absolutely planning on doing every single book on and doing a whole series deep dive of lore and everything. So expect to see that and the rest of the books in the series sometime this year. But I will be front loading that book into my queue as well. And lastly, and this shouldn't be a surprise if you have been following me for any amount of time was that I did not pick up Midnight Tides. First, House of Chains, which I did do a review on, so feel free to check that out. It took me longer than I actually expected to edit and the Malazan videos in general are just huge, just giant chunks of books and they eat up so much in my life where normally I can get through a book in a few days. A Malazan book takes me like a week to two weeks depending on like what is happening. I've been reading them a bit faster as I've like actually started to enjoy it, but I was not able to get to Midnight Tides. And this is going to be one book I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to get to in April. 
I want to at least start it in April, but I have a list of other books that I wanted to finish first. Once I have that TBR out, then we can solidify it and then I have to commit to picking it up at a certain time, but you can still expect that. One of my big channel goals this year, which I've mentioned before, is that I do want to read all of Malazan. But getting into the books that I did read, and I am planning on doing videos on every single one of these, so you can expect that in the future. Mage Lord, book three of the Spellmonger series. I actually recorded this, but if you noticed in a, my unsold video, if you picked it up, while I was traveling, I was having some audio issues. I don't know why. I brought my normal microphone with me, but something about the combination of my microphone with my laptop just destroyed the audio. So while I did have a full length recording of it, I'm going to reshoot it because I really enjoy the Spellmonger series. I think that's one of the most underrated series and fantasy that I've seen especially for having 15 books out. It's just not something I see a lot of people talk about it. And I know there are some gates to the first book where when you lead with stuff like sex magic and stuff, I can see it turning a lot of people away, but it's a shame because it's one of my favorite series and done by an indie author. Mage Lord was no exception. It was a lot of fun. It was a blast getting through it and I would highly recommend it. I won't go into too many more details except that I really enjoyed it. And if you like the first and second books, the third one is the best one so far. And I think that's when the series really starts to expand out into something really cool and special. Next was the beginning after the end Amongst the Fallen. It's the novella book 8.5. This was a fun read. It was a quick in and out of adventure. It's not too thick. Not a lot of plot happens, but one of my main criticisms with the beginning after the end was how early on so many side characters were introduced and seemingly set up and then just we never revisited them. And this was a book where we actually went back and brought a lot of these characters that I thought that were completely forgotten about and sort of interjected their storylines, caught up with them, and as a fan of the series, it was fun to go back and dive into some of these characters. Next up was Magician's Apprentice. So, Rami D. Fye's Rift War, this was one of my favorite series growing up reading. One of the things I think that got me originally into epic fantasy. I read Talon of the Silver Fox and loved it. Went and got all the books in that series, wound up revisiting and reading these, but it's been like 10 years since I picked up the series. And diving back into it, it was just so full of nostalgia, and I really loved going back into it. There were a lot of tropes, but this book was written in the 80s, so it was a lot more cutting edge when it was written. In the edition that I got, there was a forward by Raymond Feiston. This was his first debut author, and he self-admittedly says one of the reasons it works was because he didn't know exactly what he was doing, so he was, he was breaking so many writing rules in that genre that he didn't know that he was breaking, which led him to write something pretty original. I saw in like Matt's nah. book review, he actually reviewed it right when I was like writing out my review on it, which, you know, I was really hoping to be the first one to get this out. But he mentioned it being more like Lord of the Rings, but with extra future stuff. And I'd have to agree with that sentiment. Like the plot is pretty straightforward and it is reminiscent of it, but what Rift War turns into and just the scope of it, I really view it as the original Cosmere and I have a lot of sentiment and love attached to the series. So that's gonna be a series I'm going to pick up this year that I would love to get through, but there are so many books in it. We'll see, but I'm very excited to at least dive back into it, reading it. It feels like I'm just like a kid again, just coming back, diving into these books on lawn car rides and stuff. And it was just a lot of fun to get back into. The other book, and this is when I realized I had a microphone problem with my laptop, was Unsold, book one of the Cradle series. Now, while it sucks that my video's audio quality wasn't what I wanted it to be, Unsold is probably the weakest book in the Cradle series, but being a fan of the series, I think that it sets up the series very well. Well, I've seen a lot of booktubers like pick it up because it has so many like recommendations from other people. I, they pretty much always get disappointed by it or there's so much hype built up behind it that when they finally pick up Unsold, they're like, oh, this is it. Visiting Unsold, I will say that while it is the weakest book, there's the least amount of action and for being a progression fantasy, the main character doesn't really progress too much, which I think really kind of hurts it. What it does is give a really strong base for the rest of the series and I would recommend checking out the first two books if you haven't checked this out. Read Unsold and then go straight into the next book and then make your decision of whether or not you're going to like it. They're pretty quick books. 
on Audible, they're about like eight hours a piece, and it's really easy just to binge them through. But if you pick up the first book, feel disappointed, go into the second book and then see if like you really would like it or not, because that's when you start seeing the progression take off. But still, it was a really fun read. I basically like binged it in a day, and I really enjoy this series. Another one I'm going to pick up this year that I'm excited to go into and you'll be seeing a lot more of Cradle on my channel. Next was one of my favorite Grimdark series that I wanted to revisit because I haven't read the latest books out in this so I wanted to start back at the beginning, get all the context I needed and just dive right back into it but that was Joe Abercrombie's The Blade itself. Now the first Law trilogy is all I have read by him and I was just absolutely blown away when I read this back in the day. And I am a huge Joe Rampercrombie fan. I've reread this first law a few times and I've heard nothing but like ecstatic praise for the rest of the series. And because I haven't checked it out, I wanted to redo these, do some reviews on them and dive back into it. But Joe Rampercrombie, I think firmly in my top five like all time authors. And if you don't like Grimdark, but you're just a fan of modern fantasy, I would still say push past that and read it because the guy can write like, the first book, not a lot of plot happens, there's not a lot of action, you have a little bit of scenes and stuff, but the characterizations and unique voices that each of the characters have is just so well done and so amazing. You could have them all with no dialogue tags and you could do that check where they would each have a conversation, you would know exactly who's talking for everyone and you would be entertained by what they're saying. It's just a really dark series, it's very poignant, there's a lot of wit that went into it and just absolutely a blast to get through. I really enjoyed getting through this and while it has the least amount of action I know books 2 and 3 pick up and subvert everything but one of my favorite series of all time if I do a top five series or any type of that this series is always going to be really high up there because I regard it very well. And lastly I didn't finish it but I am going to finish it in the next couple of days and that's Terry Pratchett's Men at Arms. So I had read Small Gods last year and I was just blown away by it. I liked Garg's Guards but I didn't think it really held up to the same as Small Gods and maybe it was just the subject matter but diving into Men at Arms only about like halfway through it but it's one of the best books I've ever read. I love Terry Pratchett's writing. I've read some of the Death series. I've read Small Gods, you know, Guards, Guards. Enough books where I can say firmly that I'm a fan with it and will eventually want to have all of Discworld on my bookshelf and want to reread it at some point. But getting into this, it's just the combination of just how witty and humorous the dialogue is and how like quick and just fast paced the plot is and then there's just this well hidden righteous anger that Harry's like putting in there that is so well done that it doesn't really come off on first read as righteous anger but when he's talking about like his boot theory and just social economic injustice and while the first half of the book we've been kind of talking about affirmative action and racism it hasn't really paid off for the second half of the book yet what I've seen just on the first half of the book is just completely blown away and while I don't know what's going to happen with the second half because I haven't read this book before. I'm just so blown away and taken aback by the first half that I know it's going to be one of the best books that I've ever read. It's one of those where I'm not taking notes while I'm reading it because it's just I don't want to distract from the experience on this first read. So whenever I do a review on it, it'll probably just be me fangirling over just how good it was. But holy shit, I'm fully planning on finishing it up this weekend. But I am planning on releasing a TBR sometime in the next couple of days. All the books that I had on my TBR with the exception of Midnight Tides, I am fully planning on getting through this month. So I'm very hopeful that my next TBR I should be able to catch completely up and get a pretty high outpace again. Once I have those Google Docs coming out there, hopefully it becomes a little more organized and then I'll be in a place where I can take suggestions and not just have a pile of books that, oh, I should read that. Hopefully you guys have been enjoying the videos. The community post have been a lot of fun all seeing the communication and the interaction with you guys has also been just a blast I've been loving to dive into like theories and just talk about upcoming books and stuff so love to keep that going and if you guys do have any suggestions for things I should check out absolutely comment it down below while I think this month's TBR is pretty much going to be set in stone I am happy to add those to the list and at least start getting some of those checked out and I'm always down to check out something new but hopefully you guys enjoyed watching and as always take it easy